Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. This will be a short video. Um, the reason I want to get this out here is because tomorrow at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, exactly 74 years ago, Israel, in 1949, Israel became a part of the United Nations. All the credit of this, of course, goes to Isaiah 53. He found all this out, and uh, many have touched on it, but uh, he really puts it together very well in his videos, and I'm going to uh, show you his YouTube um, after I go through this. All right, so <clears throat> here we are. Where are we at on the timeline? I don't have it on here. Um, I put it as a possible date, uh, a high watch date. Again, uh, I'm not saying this is the rapture, but it is a high watch date that we should all be, you know, looking forward to another stepping stone, perhaps on the other side, or maybe it's the other side. And, or is it going to be a day of warning that the event is about to occur? I want you to notice here on... May 14th of 1948, Israel became a nation. That is a fact. 362 days later, three days, just three days shy of one year on May 11th, they were accepted into the United Nations in New York at 3 o'clock of all hours, of all times it could have possibly fell. At 3 o'clock in the afternoon, um, Isaiah 53 has come into the Discord, and I'm going to show you what he sent to me, which blew my mind, so that's why I came on here, because I wanted to share it with you. Um, I just come on here and share this with you. I, I don't do it for any other reason than to get this word out and to warn everyone, encourage everyone who's looking forward to this event to... Keep watching because the day is drawing very near and there, there's just things going on all over, all over the place. Volcanoes, earthquakes. There was just an earthquake, a huge one, 7.4, uh, that they put on, that Gina put on the newsroom uh, not too long ago. Now, May the 11th is... I believe that would be IR 26. It will be exactly 10 days before Shavuot. Shavuot being the 66th day of the year, starting the year on March the 17th. Remember, March the 16th is the day Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in a day? This only happens twice a year, one time in spring, and that is March 16th. Counting from March 17th as the first day, 66 days forward. Why 66 days? The circle down there? Somebody asked me that question. What the circles for? The circles are how many days it is from the head of the year. The head of the year is March the 17th. And you come over here to the months. Nissan has 30 days. IR has 30 days. And we're looking at Savon 6. So that would be 30, 30. That's 60 plus 6. And we land on the 66th day. Savon 6 is the 66th day. March 11th, sorry, May 11th, is exactly 10 days before Shavuot. Remember, Noah was on the ark for one year and 10 days. From the date of, I think, was it Shavuot? I, uh, I don't recall. Um, I said it yesterday. It might have been Israel being a nation, or no. It's one of the, it's one of these, May 11th, May 14th, May 18th or May 21st, where it is exactly five months and 10 days to Halloween, just as in the days of Noah. You'll see here on May 2nd, that mirrors the moment that Noah got into the ark. 10 days later, well, there it is. It's, uh, that's actually it. So it's, it's uh, May 11th. 10 days later, it will be, yeah, that's, that's uh, Isaiah 53's uh, date that he's looking at. May 11th would be um, exactly five months and 10 days. And remember, God says he'll cut the, short, uh, the time short for the very sake of the elect to five months. 
So five months from this moment, five months and 10 days from tomorrow will be um, Halloween and it will be the day the flood started. All right, so we see Jesus ascends on May 18th, which is Savan 3, which is the 63rd day of the year. And that is three days before Shavuot. And we see that Israel became a nation on May 14th of 1948. That's seven days before Shavuot. And then tomorrow, May 11th, New York time, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, 1949, Israel was recognized by the United Nations as a nation. So let me go through this here. That happened again today. These numbers, this is, it used to be 1111. Now it's so weird. And, and again, 333, I shouldn't even be seeing that. I'm at work. I shouldn't even be seeing that. But it's like something's telling me, pull your phone out. And I do. And here, this, this one was kind of unique because I pulled my phone out. I had to do something. Then I shut my phone off. I needed my phone to check an email for work, and then I checked that email, and then I went back. And then I turned my phone back on just out of curiosity, and the number was still there. I'm being called to these numbers right at the moment that they change, and I have a whole minute to snap a picture. It's really strange. Ah, is that it there? November the 10th, May 11th, 182 days. Um, This is... Oh, I was showing uh, Isaiah 53 in the Discord. Uh, He's joined the Discord and he's in there looking around um, at uh, all the information that people are putting in there. Uh, A lot of people have a lot of information and they attempt to put it in the comment section on YouTube and it just doesn't give it justice. Not as much because in in Discord you could put up a picture, you can really explain yourself. Uh, We have a lot of different rooms that you can join. Um, Each room is... I don't want to say strict, but there are guidelines to what each room talks about. And if you agree with that room, you just go into that room and you talk about that subject. And we discuss. We don't argue. There's no point in arguing. We discuss in there. So um, I want you to notice that remember when God changed the time from September the 15th, he rolled time back six months when he told Moses, to move the time back, this now is ahead of your year. When he did that, he moved it back exactly six months, 182 days. So this formula can be used throughout the calendar. On November the 10th, this is the day that Noah left the ark. He left the ark one year and 10 days after uh, after the flood began. The flood began on October the 31st. He left the ark on November the 10th. And if you do the math from November the 10th, um, it is exactly 182 days to May the 11th, which is what Isaiah 53 has talked about. This is, uh, I believe this is what he put in there. Uh, and he points out the, and you can go to his, his, uh, his YouTube and look at this, uh, what the 855 means in the bottom right corner. What catches my attention, of course, is the 3 p.m. This is the moment that Jesus went to the cross. This is in New York. This is where the meeting is, and this is where Israel is a member of the United Nations. Um, This is May the 11th, 1949, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I find that, I mean, when I saw that, I said, you know what, let me go make a video real quick. Um, Eastern Standard Time, New York Time, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you would do the math to where you are as to what time that would be. I'll be at work, and uh, all of my employees will have left at by this time, and I'll pretty much be there by myself. So if I go, they'll just find a pile of clothes. This also might be a moment of a very large warning, and uh, that that would uh, we would recognize as to what it was. And so it's some it's a very high watch time. This is one of the first times. Um, aside from, of course, Jesus on the cross at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, this is one of the first exact moments, exact moment of time that we have that we can actually look at and say, I wonder, and if something huge happens on this day, then we could be looking at a 3, 7, or 10-day warning. 
uh, like I showed you back there, we are 10 days away from Shavuot at this point uh, tomorrow at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So uh, this is where Isaiah 53 found this, and it kind of blew my mind. We've all read it, and we all thought, well, this is May 14th, 1948. This is it. But we didn't read it clearly, and Isaiah 53 has explained it very well. And he, he spoke, and here we are. And this is the point of all this watching. People are like, what you, why are you watching? This is why we're watching. Because we get into the Bible, we pick it apart, precept upon precept, verse upon verse. We study and we study. Iron sharpens iron. We keep working to try to figure this out. Not because we're going to figure it out. At the end of the day, Amos 3.7 very clearly states that God will tell us. But we're still going to do this. We're still going to watch. We're still going to try to figure this out together. We're all going to work together to try to figure this out. And he spoke to them a parable. Behold, the fig tree and all the trees. This is where Isaiah said, you know what? This is not May 14th, 1948. This is May 11th, 1949, 362 days later at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, where all of the trees are there. If Israel is a fig tree, all of the trees would represent the entire world, everyone else in it. This is as we might have misunderstood or have misunderstood all these years because we ignored the part where it says all the trees. We have misunderstood it and assigned it to May 14, 1948. And I believe, I believe Isaiah 53 is correct in, in, in uh, assuming that it is May 11th at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, 1949, which that would bring us to tomorrow. Israel being a nation, 74 years. Remember, in the third year, you said, um, don't cut it down, give it one more year. That parable about the fig tree, which, which pretty much tells us that we are in the fourth year of the 70th year. So, let me go past and back. My, my pictures, uh, for some reason, like linger before they go i watch the videos i'm like why is the picture taking so long to come across so I'll see if i go past it a little bit and come back and this is the verse in psalms 90 10 that we're all very familiar with which we have joined psalms 90 10 with let me go back and forth here luke 21 29 in stating that if the parable of the fig tree is uh, a representation of this verse here whoops the days of our years are three score, ten, uh, three score years and ten, which is 70. And if by reason of strength, they be four score years. They will need strength through the tribulation. Why would it be 70 years and then 80 years it's, and 10 years difference? It, that doesn't even match a seven-year uh, tribulation or a five-month tribulation. It's because... Uh, the other parable which talks of, uh, you know, they have to dung the tree at this, when it's three years old and give it one more year. So in the fourth year, we're right at it. We're here now. Um, let's see if I wiggle that, if that helps. I'm going to watch this video and see if it helps. I'm going to give them a shout out. Uh, I made a huge blunder yesterday that I need to fix today. Okay, this is... This is an actual pastor. He's he's actually a pastor. Um, pastor Ed Yurak. I found him uh, about a week ago, and I subscribed to him. And if you'll go down here uh, to his third video down, he will clearly and abundantly explain the pre-tribulation rapture. He will clearly and abundantly explain how we are not in the seals yet. He does a very good job. And... Uh, his teeth are a lot wider than mine, <laughs> but he is a, he's very good at, at te he's a pastor. He would be very much he would be very good at teaching. What amazes me and what I love to see um, about pastors, and what breaks my heart the most is they are so educated and so much into the Bible, so much more so than me. Especially, I'm just I'm just a guy. <laughs> I'm just a guy who started doing this a couple of years ago because I said, God, before I can even figure out when all of these dates are, because they're jumping around all over the place, they're changing every year, I can't even track this thing, 
the average person should be able to track it as simply as knowing when your birthday is and looking on a calendar. It should be that simple. It shouldn't be this it shouldn't be this convoluted to try to figure it out. And 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 I went through this process where I I'm literally searched and scoured the internet for just months and months and months and months. And I finally on Facebook went to this Enoch uh, channel and I said, listen, does anybody in here know what the first day of the year is and why? And they said, yeah, it's March 17th. And I was like, so I got that from somebody else. And I, and I was like, why? Why is it March 17th? Please explain it to me. And they said, well, because March 16th is the day of equal parts. It never changes. It hasn't changed since creation. It won't change until uh, the end of the thousand years. It has always been March 16th. Um, the sun crossing over the equator actually does change it does move by several hours the day of equal parts of march 16th moves by seconds and it goes up a few years and it comes back down it does this a little bit by seconds um, it is the most solid date that's on this entire timeline aside from the gregorian calendar which doesn't change either it's as solid as it can be and it doesn't move either and it recognizes the day at a time as well that's why we have an extra day in february february the 29th remember equal symphony found the day out of time as being february 11th february 10th and 11th is actually one day uh, it's a 48 hour period of time it's joshua's long day she found it um She's an engineer. She found it uh, uh, up in the Stellarium as being, she showed the whole, you should go watch her video, actually. She showed the whole thing about how it lines up and everything else. It was amazing. But anyway, let me get back to what I was, I don't want to make this video too long. So please go subscribe to Pastor Ed Yurak. Very good information. He only has 671 subscribers. Please go subscribe to him. Watch his videos like his videos he does a very good job and again if we if there's a warning tomorrow or even a rapture tomorrow it will be very good for the saints of the tribulation to have this type of information so they know what just happened they'll know what just happened because you'll drive pastor ed yerax youtube into the mainstream by the view when there's that many views and that many likes when you do that, it pushes it into their feed and just average people, just people who don't even look for this kind of stuff will see this kind of stuff and uh, and go in and take a look at it. And they're going to be very susceptible to it after the rapture occurs. Yesterday, I called her Barbara Weltner. I got some heat on that in the comments. I apologize. I am the absolute world's worst at names. I will confuse the name. I will say it over and over again and not even realize what I'm doing. Her name is Brenda Weltner. Um, you see exactly how many subscribers she has. She has more, so many subscribers, so many more than I do. But look at the number, 33.3. That's awesome, right? And she does a lot of uh, YouTubes with uh, Ken Potter. Ken Potter, uh, I've spoken to Ken Potter several times. He's an awesome uh, fella, very educated as well. And Bredna Weltner has, is the one that has spoken of for some time that the tribulation is not seven years long. So she does a lot of good videos. Uh, my strength is in when the year starts and when it ends. That's what I bring to the table. Her puzzle piece uh, is how long is the tribulation? She does a very good job of explaining that and love watching her videos. All right, here's Isaiah 53. Again, go subscribe to him. Go watch this video. Um, which one was it? I think it was 2023 Rapture Find. Uh, but they're all they're all very short and they're very good. They're short and to the point and sweet. And I absolutely love it when he yells. He just yells this whole thing out. We warned you. We told you it was going to happen. And you didn't listen. And now you're left behind and you were... Banking on your works, how much money you gave, all the wonderful things you did, how often you went to church, all the things you did, and you didn't lean on the one thing, the only thing that you were supposed to lean on, and that was the cross, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ alone. He is the only way. There is no other way. All these videos are for nothing. 
but they are for everything. These videos do not count towards anything to do with my salvation. I don't even, never even remotely thought that this had anything to do with any part of my salvation. I have been saved for many years. However, I am not perfect like anyone else is perfect. My salvation is completely, um, how do you say, completely reliant upon Jesus. If I don't have him, I don't have anything. I bring zero to the table. And I've always known that from the moment I got saved back early on until now, I've always known that there's nothing I have to offer, which is why behind me you'll see John 6.44. Nobody comes to the Father, lest the Father draw him. God is working a work in your heart right now. He is in your heart right now, working a good work. And blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is ignoring that he is calling you, which is why I say, go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody, and accept the Lord into your heart. This is a private intimate moment between you and your creator every breath you take whether you like it or not you're saying his name your dna has his name written in it there is nothing you can do to separate yourself from him because you were created by him denying him is blasphemy of the holy spirit in the end in the end every knee will bow so do it out of pride later or do it now be forced be don't do it now out of pride but or, or do it later after you've been through the tribulation and you realize this crazy people these crazy people who kept warning me that this was going to happen and it has happened and i just laughed about it you know um it's like it's like this an atheist would tell me why do you waste all of your time studying and researching and doing all the things that you're doing. Why do you waste your time? I said, because if I'm right, I'm going to heaven. If I'm wrong, like you believe, I'll go into nothingness. But if you're right, you're going into nothingness. And if you're wrong, you're going to hellfire. Think about that for a moment. At the end of the day, every knee will bow. Don't be so prideful. He created you. You breathe his name. He's waiting for you to make a choice. Not making that choice is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. All right, let me get back into this. That's how serious I am. They were getting so close here. It's very serious that we, uh, that we do this. Okay, last picture. <laughs> you are not going to believe this. This person, this person's awesome. This person, she has 147 subscribers. I'd like to see that number go up. You are not going to believe this, but she has made videos that God has told her that she is to look. I think she had a dream is what she said or a vision. I don't recall what it was. Completely independent from me. She doesn't even know who I am, <laughs> which is good. I like that. Independent of me. The same thing has happened to her. Not too long ago, she only has three videos that she's made. Not too long ago, the same thing has happened to her where God has told her, you need to look at Enoch. Enoch is the key to when the year begins. This is the timeline that you were to be looking at. When you put plug in the Enoch, head of the year, and you go throughout, there is nothing that fails. It all lands perfectly as to where the Shavuot, the Pentecost, when Jesus was conceived. If it doesn't, if it didn't land on a perfect day as to when it happened, then I would be like when um, it confused me um, when uh, when the moon was made white as it the the blood moon was made white as it crossed uranus and i was like what is why if jesus was born in september do i have this wrong did was jesus not born on september the 29th what does 40 days why does november the 8th why does this happen november 8th why doesn't it happen and i and i didn't even write it down because i'm like Noah's left the ark on november the 10th but this 
Blood Moon wiped clean by by um, you know uh, turned white by Uranus it was uh, happening on November the eighth, and then we have Pentecost on November the seventh. Did I mess up? Did it come? Did I come up one day wrong? What happened? So why didn't it? But then I realized Jesus was born on September twenty ninth. Forty days exactly later, forty days. Now this happened. This just happened not too long ago. These are all signs. Look up. Look up. When you see these things come to pass, the day draws near, November the 8th, exactly 40 days. And then I was like, wow, that blew my mind that that happened. So go subscribe to her channel. God is calling her. I left her a message. So um, God told you to look at Enoch, huh? And it might, you'll see my comment. And uh, in, I think it's, well, I can't show it to you because I'm not on it. This is a picture. But uh, the one, at the, 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 the second video I make a comment and I say, so if Enoch is telling you when to look for the head of the year, do you, what date do you sign to the Gregorian calendar? She gives me this whole long thing and she's like, just follow my videos and I'll teach you. And I, I was just so, I was just so happy to see that God was calling somebody else to look at this and she has been called and same thing happened to me when I first started. I didn't know I, you know, I knew, I figured it was the, the equinox. I figured that was it. And then I, I read where Jesus said, are there not 12 hours in the day? And that's the same day Lazarus died. And if you do the math from that day, it just walks perfectly to the calendar. Perfectly to the calendar. Right down here, I want to show you real quick. Right here. Up at the top in yellow, Jesus was born. This is Tabernacles. The times between tabernacles and when tabernacles ends is precise. The time when um, Noah leaves the ark is precise. All of these things are precise. October 31st is when Halloween began. If you do the math from when Jesus was born, a woman is unclean for 40 days exactly after she gives birth to a male child this i couldn't make this up that this happened i couldn't make it up 40 days later was november the 8th i could not make that up that it had that it had happened on the 29th and jesus was circumcised on the eighth day over here mary conceives on december the 25th but wait she goes to see her cousin it Seven day walk. I looked it up. It's seven days, and that's exactly how long it takes an egg to attach to the uterine wall. It travels down the tube and goes to the uterine wall. Seven days. She travels. She sees her cousin Elizabeth and John leaps in the womb. This happens on New Year's Day. New Year's Day is a Pentecost when you count all the days. It's just, it's amazing. It has been amazing to watch this whole thing unfold. And it's confirming when I see a brand new person being led down the same path I was years ago. And that's why I think it's uh, it'd be cool to go subscribe. And um, it's awesome to watch the Holy Spirit work in everyone. And again, this is just mine. There are people who have figured out all these feasts. Dr. Barry is absolutely astounding at what the work he has done and all these people that have put so much effort into figuring all this out and i think i think we might be at the very end of this uh, bob barber over at end times dreams and visions has just, has like worked it out it's 2023 i couldn't work out the year but he did and so all of these pieces of the puzzle are to come together and we're right at it so i want to get off here I wanted to promote those channels. Please go subscribe to them. Um, watch her, that last one I showed you. Um, watch her develop as she goes and watch to see if the Holy Spirit doesn't guide her in um, a direction like he did me, I feel, you know. So, um, and make sure you like and subscribe and uh, give them a thumbs up or a comment in their, in their uh, comment section. Get their get their algorithm built up so that it makes it through this rapture and gets to the saints where it all really needs to go to. And so they can sit down and remember, just like Elisha and Elijah, uh, Elisha said, if you see me go, if you see me go, I will throw down my cloak and you will receive a double portion. Elijah was a image or a picture of the bride. 
Elisha was an image or a picture of the saint that will go through tribulation. But they'll be okay. They'll have a double portion. And there is a lot of people. There is a great multitude that no man can count that will appear in heaven at seal six. Remember, I gotta say this a hundred times, the seals, you can look it up, you can talk to almost anybody, almost anybody, and they will tell you that the seals are in fact the punishment of God. They begin tribulation. They have not been open for the last 2,000 years um, because we're there to witness that first seal being open. To say otherwise is to say that the bride is already there, that we missed it, and that we're waiting for seal six, and that the 24 elders, in fact, do represent every tribe and every nation and every tongue. I don't see 24 people representing an entire planet of uh, all these 6,500 languages, 193 countries. I, I don't see how 24 can do that. And then this number pops up out of nowhere saying there's uh, 10,000 times 10,000s and thousands and thousands, and they threw their crowns, and they witnessed um, uh, the John, uh, John uh, they were behind John witnessing the first seal being opened, and they are re represented by these 24. And I would say that not a good representation, but I would say that... Um, if you went to a foreign country, your president represents you. I know, right? Um, or if that country, for example, when we think of, you know, and I couldn't even name a president of the country, which probably isn't cool. I should, I, I really don't study that kind of stuff. But if that president came here from, for example, Japan, that president would represent all of Japan. And it's the same thing with the Netherlands, Germany, Israel, Netanyahu. If Netanyahu came here, he's representative of the people of Israel. Um, he's the head of that. But if he comes here, um, he would represent all of the people over there. And they would be included as a part of him. He really can't run a country if he has no people. So he has people. And same thing here. So anyway, let me get off of here. I can talk all day. Um, like, comment, share, and subscribe my channel too, maybe? At least do theirs. I'll be happy with that. Uh, God bless, and if this is it, if we get some warning, or um, if nothing happens, we're going to keep watching. But uh, I'm, I am i don't know. It's, uh, it's looking pretty good on May 11th, so tomorrow. That's tomorrow, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That literally is... Uh, that's 18 hours, I think, from right now. Yeah, that's 18 hours from right now. So keep watching. The moment is getting clo ever so much closer every single day. And we're just seeing so many things that are pointing us to, hey, I think you're on to something here. So just keep watching. And wouldn't it be awesome? Wouldn't it be awesome if my timeline meant nothing, if, uh, if none of these timelines meant anything, and it always had to do with when Israel became recognized by the United Nations tomorrow at three o'clock in the afternoon. And it's not a feast day. It's not, it's, I mean, it's, it, it really, and wouldn't that drive them to jealousy? Wouldn't that drive them to jealousy? May 11th at three o'clock in the afternoon for everyone to just, uh, all the bride to just disappear. If you see me go, Repo Man 64, if I catch on to something else, or I think it's very important for you to go watch somewhere else, um, I'll be on here to tell you uh, to go to go and subscribe and watch their channels. So, all right, God bless. Maybe we won't. Maybe we'll see you tomorrow in heaven. You won't recognize me. I'm going to be all young, strong. My knees won't hurt. Oh, uh, did you hear that? Pop my knee. <laughs> Getting old. My back. I can. I'll be able to bend over and pick something up without groaning. It'll be great. So, yeah, getting close to sixty. Maybe in heaven tomorrow.